We're in Istanbul here for a few days, four days or so, leading, leading up to the bank holiday weekend, the June bank holiday weekend in Ireland. So it's a nice break. Looking forward to seeing the sights around this famous city. Istanbul was Constantinople, and prior to that, it was Byzantium. So it's sort of a, a tale of three cities, as it were. Huge historical significance, famous, iconic city. Istanbul and we're going on a walking tour this morning so I'm looking forward to that and seeing the sites, the various mosques and so on around the place. So. The Hippodrome is also known as Sultan Ahmet Square. It is a square in Istanbul. It was previously a circus that was a sporting and social centre of Constantinople, capital of the Byzantine Empire. The word Hippodrome comes from a Greek, Greek word for Hippos, horse, and Dromos, path or pathway. For this reason, it's sometimes called the Horse Square in uh, Turkish. Horse racing and chariot racing were popular pastimes in the ancient world and hippodromes were common features of Greek cities in the Hellenistic, Roman and Byzantine eras. It's a lovely park, it's really nice and cool with all the trees and so on, it's pretty warm now. In Istanbul it's uh, local time, 10 to 10, 11, 12, it's 10 to 12 I think, nearly midday or nearly noon so. Get pretty warm. No, it's nice in this park, very nice. The Spice Bazaar in Istanbul is one of the largest bazaars in the city. It's uh, the most famous covered shopping complex after the Grand Bazaar. In this bazaar you'll find nearly a hundred shops selling spices, Turkish delight and other sweets, jewellery, souvenirs, dried nuts, fruit, etc. etc. The Hagia Sophia, officially the Hagia Sophia Grand Mosque, was formerly a Christian church, it is a mosque and a major cultural and historic site in Istanbul. The building was erected three times by the Eastern Roman Empire. The present Hagia Sophia is the third, built in 537 AD. It was an Orthodox church until the Ottoman conquest of Istanbul in 1453 then a mosque in, uh, until 1935, then a museum, and then from 2020, a mosque again, as well as being a Roman Catholic cathedral for some decades after the Fourth Crusade of 1204. The current structure was built by the Byzantine Emperor Justinian I as the Christian Cathedral of Constantinople for the Byzantine Empire between 532 and 537.
The Blue Mosque is a functioning mosque. It was constructed between 1609 and 1616 during the rule of Ahmed I. It is uh, known for its uh, being bathed in blue as uh, the lights frame the mosque's five main domes, six minarets and eight secondary domes. It's next to the Hagia Sophia, the principal mosque of Istanbul. Blue Mosque, blue mosque one of the more, or most famous mosques in Istanbul. Blue ceramic tiles here is a big, big feature. But it's one of the most famous mosques in Istanbul, Blue Mosque. The previous one I was in there was the Hagia Sophia. The Basilica Cistern is actually a subterranean cistern, a subterranean palace. It's the largest of several hundred ancient cisterns that lie beneath the city of Istanbul. It um, was built in the 6th century during the reign of Byzantine Emperor Justinian I. Today it's kept with little water for public access inside the space. The subterranean cistern was called Basilica because it was located under a large public square, the Stoa Basilica, on the first hill of Constantinople. Prior to its construction, a great basilica stood on the spot. It had been built during the early Roman ages between the 3rd and 4th centuries as a commercial, legal and artistic centre. The basilica was reconstructed after a fire in 476. We're heading up to Galata Tower this morning. Galata Tower, famous tower. The Galata Tower is an old Genoese tower in the Galata part of Istanbul. It was built as a watchtower at the highest point of the lost walls of Galata. It's an exhibition space now and a museum. The tower was erected in what was to it's become Galata. Galata. Spectacular views of Istanbul. This is the Galata Tower. I think it was some sort of a watchtower for invading armies or whatever, some sort of protection. I'm not sure who built it. I think it dates from 1500. 1529 or 100%. There's no audio tour. It also signifies the uh, divide between Asia and Europe. So one side of the Bosphorus, Istanbul, is in Asia. And one side of the Bosphorus Strait is in Europe. So Istanbul is a city divided between two continents, Asia and Europe. And the Bosphorus divides the city. And we're going on a short hour and a half tour of it today on this boat. If it ever takes off, and one side, as I say, of the river will be in Asia, one side will be in Europe. I'm not sure whether we're going to get any sort of a tour from this fella. I doubt it very, very much given the price that we paid and given the length of time that we're spending here for him to pack his boat and get enough diesel to fill the boat. It's uh, unlikely that this is going to be the most educational tour of the Bosphorus we could have done. 
but it's going to be useful enough, I suppose. Hopefully, it's on for an hour and a half, and we're hoping for the best. So. streets here from Istanbul we're on our way up to the Grand Bazaar the Grand Bazaar apparently has 1,000 shops and it's built hundreds of years and uh, it's supposed to be an utter shitstorm if you are turned off by retail or by shopping or by traders trying to make a living so that's where we're heading now famous Taksim Square. Taksim Square is the central point, I believe, of political protests and uh, that sort of thing. It's significant in Turkish life, Turkish history, Turkish culture and so on. Taksim Square, I think I've seen uh, protests, marches and uh, political rallies and so on being held here, I think. But uh, it is a place that's recommended to visit when you visit Istanbul. So. Suleimani Mosque, built in, I think, the 16th century, one of the most famous mosques in Istanbul as well, so we're going to go into that there today. This mosque is an Ottoman imperial mosque, located on the third hill of Istanbul. It was commissioned by Suleiman the Magnificent and designed by uh, the imperial architect Mimar Sinan. The foundation date is 1550 and the inauguration date is 1557. Behind the wall of the mosque there's an enclosure containing the separate octagonal mausoleums of Suleiman the Magnificent and his wife. Um, so for 462 years the Suleiman Yi Mosque was the largest mosque in the city until it was surpassed by another mosque in 2019. It has one of the best known sites, or is one of the best known sites of Istanbul on uh, the third hill of Istanbul and has great views over the city uh, around the Golden Horn.
This is the octagonal mausoleum of Suleiman the Magnificent and it bears the date of 1566, the year of his death. His wife is here as well, uh, her mausoleum is also here. There's a tomb there of uh, Soleimani, that building there. He's the guy who commissioned the building of this mosque in 1557. 1557. It took seven years to build. Today we're heading out to the Prince's Islands. Prince's Islands is an archipelago off the coast of Istanbul in the Sea of Marmara. It's about 20 kilometers, I think, from Istanbul. One of the unusual features of uh, the islands is that there is no motor cars. And you'll see people going around in what look like golf buggies, electric buggies, as you can see there. Prince's Islands are popular destinations for day trips from Istanbul and one of our guides was telling us that he, he goes out there during the summer to be popular with people from Istanbul. During the period of the Byzantine Emperor, Empire out of favour princes and other royalty were exiled on the islands. After 1453 members of the Ottoman Sultan's family were exiled there too and that's where the island's present name comes from the Prince's Islands. Heading back into Istanbul there now and if you find the video useful I'd appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. I would recommend Istanbul uh, as a good place to visit. Thanks.